in a normal sunny day outside will produce 25,000 units of vitamin D a day. Now compare that to the current UK government uh, a recommended amount of uh, 400 units per day. It makes it look really quite laughable. Uh, here's the original paper here. Now you can get most of this paper. Um, you can download quite a lot of this paper and it's so interesting. Um, it gives quite a lot of the historical background if you read the introduction. What happened back in the 1920s and 30s when people started realising the importance of vitamin D for things like treating tuberculosis and psoriasis and rheumatoid arthritis, they actually gave doses that were way too high, like 10 times too high. And that's why people became paranoid about the higher doses of vitamin D. So we went down to like minuscule doses. Uh, daily oral dosing of vitamin D3 to 5,000 to 50,000 units a day. Hospitalised patients. And now these were patients admitted to a, a, a psychiatric facility, often for severe uh, men mental illness. But it meant they were able to monitor all the vitamin D levels of the patients that came in, offer supplements and titrate it up. So it's a really, really good sample, actually. I think it's a very nice piece of research. They say vitamin D is a hormone produced in the skin, which is true, it is, uh, in amounts estimated up to 25,000 international units a day. So if we were like uh, hunter-gatherers or living outside like we're supposed to, or agricultural labourers, or if I'm spending all day at summer in my allotment, then I should be making about 25,000 units a day. Much higher than a lot of people think. That is a really quite a large amount of vitamin D that's been made in this natural physiological situation, which is probably a pretty good comparator to take. Uh, the actions of ultraviolet B uh, radiation, as we know, on the skin. Uh, vitamin D deficiency is common, the authors say, and we know that's true. Lack of uh, exposure to the sun, present in very few food sources. No, it's not surprising. Surprising. Deficiency is strongly linked to an increase in a multitude of diseases, the authors correctly say. And we've looked at some on this uh, on this channel before. I haven't prepared this, so I'll see what I can remember. Immunity, of course. Heart disease. Multiple sclerosis. Autoimmune disease. Colon cancer, for sure. Um, low levels of vitamin D are highly correlated with colon cancer. And probably prostate cancer and breast cancer as well. We could go on if several of which have been historically shown to dramatically improve with ultraviolet exposure to the skin. Like in the old days, they used to put the TB patients out on the balcony. Or supplements can also be effective. Uh, these diseases included, now this is the examples that they give here, asthma, psoriasis, the inflammation of the skin, rheumatoid arthritis. You know, I've looked after patients in absolute agony for years with rheumatoid arthritis and the idea that I could have helped these patients pain by giving them high doses of vitamin d and I didn't because we didn't know about it but but why didn't we know about it you know this is not prehistory I'm talking about um, it just seems such a pity that these patients weren't helped with this very very safe very very cheap and efficacious intervention doctors to trust.com Please share this video with loved ones.